about the article that's up on Infowars.com. Paul Joseph Watson put up a video shows troops training to intern citizens in Fort Lauderdale. Martial law style drill is caught on camera. And he points out armed troops were arresting. We're going to show you this video. We're going to talk about this in just a moment. Arresting role players on the street before a column of prisoners are marched toward a mock internment facility. You also see them being picked up and put into white vans and driven away. Some of them taken away by helicopter, apparently. Accompanied by very little media coverage, they says that it would be, uh, they would be assisting uh, members of the U.S. Special Forces. This is what they were told in when it, this began to happen. This is what the media told them. Said that, the, uh, that law enforcement is going to be assisting members of Special Forces who are undergoing urban warfare training. And they had this in various locations. The military did not disclose this beforehand. And that's what's different about Jade Helm, is that this uh, unclassified document was hidden in plain sight, but not viral. People didn't know that was going on. They typically only tell people as this is happening or the day before. They say the goal is to prepare participants in realistic, unfamiliar training conditions before they deploy for combat overseas. Look, I don't even believe this is for combat overseas. If so, it has a dual purpose. But as Madison said, if tyranny ever comes to this land, it will come in the form of fighting a foreign enemy. That's the way this is being brought to us. So let's go and take a look at this, because to me, this is obviously training for the kinds of stuff we've been concerned about since indefinite detention by the military and rendition were passed as part of the NDAA. We've been saying that this is precisely what would happen, and now they're acting it out for us on our streets with the help of law enforcement. Because, you know, of course, in foreign countries, they're going to have, when they do this in Iran, uh, they're going to have the cooperation of the Iranian police, right? No, they're not. No, they're not. Uh, this is for use in America, folks. And you can see this. Let's run this uh, clip here. And as we're running this clip, I want to play for you what they were telling the Brazos County officials about Jade Helm. For those of you who can't see this, this is a black helicopter coming in, these Black Hawk helicopters. No one will be staying here in Brazos County. They'll be coming in, doing the hit and extract. Uh, time Come in, on doing ground, the hit and extract. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes of exposure, then that's it. Then we're done. Can we recommend some places to you to hit? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, every county that we have briefed has, uh, have, has done that for us also. Now, what we're looking at there, we just saw somebody on the ground, soldiers surrounding him. You're going to see that person getting uh, drug off or somebody else uh, being drug off in just a moment. More helicopters landing and taking off. This is a very dangerous thing to be operating helicopters at this level in a major city. Uh, I don't know if you can get, I don't think you can get FAA permission to do that normally. Now this, what we're looking at on the uh, video right now, is a line of people being marched across a civilian American street accompanied by to the put military. Unconventional warfare into a perspective. You, you see it a couple different places up there, unconventional warfare, and I'll explain that from a historical perspective. Again, this is a so, presentation um, at Brazos County of Jade Helm that you're listening to. Troops on troops, tanks on tanks, uniform enemy against uniform en enemy is the way conventional warfare is, is generally defined. Unconventional warfare, from a historical perspective, if you think of World War II, Germany came in and they took over France. The French did not want them there. They formed the French underground. The French underground conducted activities such as subversion and sabotage. They would hit logistics lines to... Yeah, so think uh, about to, to Nazi occupation of France, okay? We're playing the part of the Nazis. That's what the American government is doing right now. Go ahead, keep playing that. Moralize the, the um, Germans. So what a lot of folks don't know is there were American advisors with the French underground throughout World War II assisting them in planning and conducting those types of activities. Now, if you're watching this Since video right now, you see civilians being loaded in white States vans. United States Army Special Forces has had the charter to conduct unconventional warfare throughout and there they go, the globe. driving them off in the white vans to the internment The last centers. 15 years, we have been in Afghanistan and Iraq. We've huh. been doing more of a counterinsurgency. Okay, role hold it right there. Yeah, that's it. They're now counterinsurgency because, you see, if they go in and invade a country and the people fight back against it, like the French did against the uh, Germans, the... The French resistance was an insurgency, they call it. And then, of course, the Germans would do uh, what the Nazis did, and they call that counterinsurgency. That's where we've been hanging out for the last uh, several decades. 
on the German side of the equation. And let me explain to you, when they go into these county commissioners and they tell them this is about unconventional warfare, they don't define what unconventional warfare is that much in detail. You can go to Wikipedia and you can see the quotes taken from the military documents, as I mentioned on Friday. Unconventional warfare is an attempt to achieve military victory through acquiescence, through capitulation, through clandestine support for one side in a conflict. It's a PSYOP. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get the American people to acquiesce to the military operating in their midst to understand that or to feel as if these people are so powerful they cannot be opposed. We cannot acquiesce to this. They say unconventional warfare targets civilian populations psychologically to win hearts and minds. It only targets military and political bodies directly seeking to render the military proficiency of the enemy to be irrelevant. Say so this is all about training, and they go on to say, training, equipping, and advising locals who will seek regime change. What kind of regime change are we looking for here in America? Well, they have been doing a lot to change the way America operates. We've documented that over the last several years. It didn't start with Obama, unfortunately. It's been going on, getting progressively and exponentially worse with each president. When we look at Posse Comitatus... And the Posse Comitatus Act, let's, let's first go back to Posse Comitatus. What is that? Let's understand the background, the history of this. Posse Comitatus in the Latin means power of the community. They shortened it to a posse. You've all heard of the Western Posse. The idea being that you did not have in America until the latter part of the 20th century, you did not have a permanent standing army of policemen in uniforms with guns. Now, what you had was a sheriff, maybe a couple of deputies. If there was something major that had happened, if there was a riot, uh, if there was a bank robbery, the sheriff would come around. He would get the members of the community who were armed because they were not slaves. They had the means, the ability, the right to protect themselves. So they had arms. They would be collected by the sheriff, and they would put together a posse to take care of that bank robber or to put down that riot. So it was the power of the community, posse comitatus. And, of course, you know, as I said, they shortened it essentially to posse. You know, you don't want to hear um, John Wayne talking about posse comitatus. It sounds too pedantic. You know, so it's like, yeah, let's get the posse. Let's go get these guys. So that's what they did. It was essentially like the militia as opposed to a permanent professional standing army because they understood that you don't want to be under professional military people. You don't want to be under a police state. And so what you have is the community with power, not a few people who are in law enforcement. And look at what we have today. We have, we have police, we have sheriffs, we have highway patrol. Everywhere you are, you've got three levels of people in uniforms with guns standing there to harass you like highway robbers. That's what it's about. Look at what happened in New York when they shut things down because they got angry with the mayor who didn't stand with them, uh, when they choked Eric Garner to death over an unpaid cigarette tax. They said, fine, you're not going to stand behind us. You're going to throw us in the, the bus, under the bus when we uh, enforce your petty rules and regulations based on getting revenue. Then we're not going to do that. We're not going to collect that for you. We're not going to write tickets or arrest people unless it is absolutely necessary. You know what? 95% drop in arrests and tickets because 95%, probably much more, but at least 95%, they admitted, was unnecessary of what they did. And actually, crime went down. See, when people look at this and you say, we shouldn't, we should have the power in the community. We should have a militia instead of a permanent standing army. We should have a posse that is called together by a sheriff instead of having a massive police force that oppresses the people, harasses the people, eats out their substance, as the founders of this country put in the Declaration of Independence. We need to understand what's going on with that. We need to take back that power. We need to question the role of these men with arms that we've put in to rule over us like overseers on a plantation. Just because you're operating in the house of the plantation doesn't mean you got a good deal or you're safe. You understand that? The people who are doing hard time out in the field, they understood they didn't want to be slaves. But a lot of the people who are working in the house, they kind of like that deal. But it's not a good thing. You have to want your freedom. And the way you're going to get it is to get rid of these permanent police state operations, to get rid of the standing military. We need to have that discussion. But, of course, we can't.
Nothing can be done to reduce the defense budget. Not even our most libertarian candidates will cut the defense budget. Stay with us. We're going to be right back and talk about more of this background.